There are approximately 15 million hunters in the U.S. alone. Many of these would consider their style to be off-grid. In today's society, with constant sprawling of urban growth, boundaries have changed. Off-grid has changed. Welcome to Helena, Montana. Helena is known for its gold rush villages. This place is not only rich with gold, but has some of the best big game hunting in the West. We are here to see Brian Soli, a family man, an avid bow hunter, and an architect. This sheep maniac is also the vice president of the Montana chapter of the Wild Sheep Federation. He is our next target to crash his party and get an inside look of his off-grid taste. From thousands of requests, we handpicked individual hunters to invade their personal space and to find out how they get off-grid. Are these guys truly badasses? In order to do this right, we pulled in someone who really knows. Meet host, Tim Burnett. This guy eats beer for breakfast. Tim has made a career out of hunting alone. This guy sleeps more nights on the ground than most people do on their own bed. Known for hunting and fishing alone, many consider Tim to be OG solo hunter. And I'm Mark Bellister, a comic, TV personality, and a jiu-jitsu fighter from New York. I've been producing TV for over six years. Many like to say that I'm a wild jokester. And I guess you could say I like the lighter side of things. Together, we hit the road to see what defines an off-grid hunter. But there's a catch. It's not going to be easy. We're going to jump into their shoes for the day and get an inside look of their different backwoods city lives. We are here to see if they really are an off-grid hunter. Today I'm in Helena, Montana, visiting avid bow hunter Brian Solon. Now this guy says that he eats, sleeps, and breathes off-grid hunting. I think it's time we pay him a visit and find out for ourselves. We hiked Mount Helena this morning. This is kind of my normal routine. As we get closer to the fall, I build up the pack and put a little heavier weight in it as we go. And my theory on being able to carry an 80-pound pack in the mountains, the best way to train for that is to carry an 80-pound pack in the mountains. So try to do that is almost every day. If I don't hike it, I run it without a pack. And uh, you know, this, this access, this trail access in Helena is really close to town. Uh, it's less than a couple miles from my house. Uh, it's right next to my office. I'll usually leave, if I do in the evenings, right from my office and just hike the mountain, head home and shower. Pretty incredible trail system. So you get the benefit of living in a city, but it's, uh, it's a small town. We have some contemporary kind of modern taste. You can tell by the house we live in, you know, kind of a flat roof, uh, pretty wild color uh, stylings. And uh, it's a little bit of a square peg in a round hole, but you know, there's a, there's a pretty eclectic vibe to Helena and to Montana in general, so it, it works. Contemporary and modern? Yep, a square peg in a round hole, definitely. But according to most of today's modern day society, all of us hunters are square pegs and round holes. Brian seems to be one of those chameleon type of guys that can walk comfortably down the streets of Helena as a hometown engineer, and then in a flash, hit the hills as an avid sheep hunter. Bighorn sheep are this guy's passion, and in 2009, he got lucky and drew a limited entry tag of a lifetime. Nice shot, buddy. Nice shot, Brian. Killed this ram this morning with the bow. 43 yards. I think it's our 24th day hunting sheep <laughs> over the last four months. This segment of Off Grid Hunter is brought to you by Random Gear, the makers of Solo Hunter rifle covers your gun's best protection against the elements. After the hike, we tag along with Brian as he shoots his bow, and we do more talking about his amazing elk hunt. Oh, hi. You spined your elk and you <laughs> flat missed your deer. Do it again. 
So what are the odds of me taking your bow and, and, and dead nut in that, that 70 yard? Let's see it. Which, which pin is it? Bottom. All right, let me see your release. If you don't mind. All right. Oh, sorry about it. If I break your bow, I just have this, this massive strength. Center punch defense post behind it. <laughs> Brian Solon is definitely a humble and laid back kind of a guy. But when we started talking about this past season elk hunt, his chest stuck out a little bit and his chin raised, and he really got excited in telling me about this hunt. After seeing the footage and this bull that he killed, I can't really seem to blame him. This was an awesome hunt and an awesome bull that he was able to get here in Montana. That bull I shot last year almost dropped in his tracks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Stuffed one right at 45 yards, stuffed it straight in on him, arrow buried completely in his chest. And you self you self filmed that too, right? Self film. Solo filmed that one. Solo. And I shot it first light opening morning. this week, got him up close. Bugle gave me a challenge, Bugle, he came across, right at 40 yards. Got it broke down completely, packed it out, made it back to town by 2 p.m. We had a wedding in Missoula, which is two hours away, 90 miles away, 100 miles away. Um, I actually officiated that wedding that night. Really? At five o'clock. So I was- With blood I, under your fingernails? So, and it's a hunting family, they, they sh a friend of ours and as we're getting ready to go up the aisle I, I was all face painted up and showered quick and my wife was just going nuts she thought she was gonna be really upset with me <laughs> for missing the wedding and uh especially the wedding and i'm supposed to be the efficient at and as we're getting ready to go up the aisle the bride grabs me and she wipes some eye black out of my ear that i missed oh, in the shower no. <laughs> You might kiss the bride, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, that's what I did. That's what you did? That's what I did. I was the, I was the minister. Do you have like a clergy license? No, you can get, like anything, you can get a license on the internet. <laughs> you can license to do anything on the internet, right? That's awesome. Uh, Turns out I'm a truck driver. Yeah. Because it says so. Mainstream society would have you believe that all hunters are middle-aged, plaid-wearing, bearded, just fat, impotent old men. But part of this off-grid project is to show how we are bigger part of society than most people really think. Not only is Brian a minister that performs weddings every now and then, but he's also a well-established engineer in the community and the vice president of the Montana chapter of the Wild Sheep Foundation. So your house, we went to your house, uh, very modern, contemporary. I like it. My wife, would, she would love it. She'd be like, this is really cool. This is what I want. Yeah. But you you designed your house, right? Yeah, we did. My wife and I both have a really contemporary kind of style. So we have, you know, flat roofs and kind of crazy colors and different kind of siding and real contemporary materials, simple layouts. So we did, you know, we did all the design work for it and, and laid it out. And, you know, it, we love it. So, uh, you know, not your typical Montana house, but uh, it's what, what we like to do and, you know, tying back some of my engineering work into the house designs. So this is, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a fairly visual guy. and This is, you know, every day working here and I keep, I keep some photos and things of, of goals for me. I, I just, I, I like to keep, you know, motivation, you call it, you know, pictures of some places I'd like to build a dream cabin, replace our cabin with a, just an awesome lodge kind of feel and then you know right here the the top four hunts I'd like to do of course finish out the the, the sheep and and hopefully do some international sheep hunting that, that's my passion and goals and it seems to keep me motivated to look up every once in a while and see that so so this this is the first first major sheep hunt I was on and 
Uh, I drew this tag in 2009, Montana unit. Not a typical brakes unit that you see now coming out. The big sheet is Southwest Montana, not known for giant rams. So we spent we spent 24 days hunting this ram. Passed him up three different times. Uh, now you were just hunting this ram, though. I've seen the footage. Oh no, we were filming, and, and uh, we were filming a lot of sheep. We think we looked at probably over 100 different rams before we settled in on this one. Had an opportunity to kill him at 30 yards with a bow and passed one day. And, uh, just wasn't ready yet, and then finally got a, a pretty good, pretty good opportunity on him and stuck an arrow in him. No time. It was number six in the world when I killed him with a really? bow. Yeah. Were you looking for a bigger ram? I just wanted to make sure I had seen everything in the unit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see every sheep. That I want to see them all before I that kind of once in a lifetime deal. So I, yeah. I really took advantage and and uh, uh, spent some time hunting. And it kind of got it, it, this really got me hooked on sheep and gave me the right. sheep bug just seeing you guys go through that in the snow and everything and with your bow i was like i was thinking to myself i would have pulled out the gun a long time ago yeah. and just hammered that thing it was yeah. it was tough it was tough to hold out so this ram i killed is is nine and a half years old and and in some areas uh like in alaska with doll sheep you've gotta you've gotta know the age before you kill it so the easiest way is to really the only way to age sheep is to look at the rings. And these sheep grow from the base out. They don't shed their horns, they've got them for life. So you count these age rings and, and that's that's one year's of growth right there. So you count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this one, he's broomed out, his lamb tips would be nine, so he's actually nine and a half years old. So it's a, uh, nine and a half year old ram and, and you can see that the, the growth gets smaller every year. There's certain sheep, you know, you'll get 12, 13 year old sheep where you have growth rings that are less than a quarter inch. Uh, but it's one of the, the easiest ways to uh, tell you, you, you're going to harvest a mature animal. This segment of Off Grid Hunter is brought to you by G5, designed to hunt. Prime, accuracy is everything. MOA Rifles, the evolution of long range hunting. Random Gear, the makers of Solo Hunter rifle covers. Outdoor Edge, quality knives and tools for all of your outdoor adventures. Without a doubt, I've never met anyone as passionate about sheep hunting as Brian Soule. So what do you do when you live in the middle of Montana in prime sheep hunting country and you don't have a tag for yourself? Well, if you're like Brian, you find a friend that does and you scout for bighorn sheep throughout the season while you're hunting for mule deer and elk. He's 15, 15 and a half at the base. And I think he's about 38 long. Well, you know, that puts him right in that 180 category. He's a heavy, mature ram. He's got a nice chocolate cape, dark, dark neck. He's the dominant ram, look at him. Look at him right now. He's right at his jaw and he's 7 8 curl. Four rams that ran to the left is probably close to a buck ram. But they're all coughing. Try to keep the video running here to see if we can catch them coughing, but they've all got pasture alone. Unfortunately, you're all gonna die. Passed up. 
probably 100 each earlier. Hopefully that was the right decision. Um, it's a big ram. We'll see. Congratulations, buddy. Nice shot. That is one hell of a shot, kid. Nice shot. He's done. Congratulations, buddy. You just made the record book. I don't know how to thank you guys enough. It's a great shot, pal. It's a good shoot. I was all freaking doing stuff this morning. Pick your head up for the camera. Smile. I don't think I'm going to be able to walk for a few minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these are crazy because they're on the ground. That was one sweet shot, dude. Congratulations, buddy. Nice shot. That is one hell of a shot, kid. My hat's off to anybody who draw a sheep tag and successfully fill it. Knowing that you could only draw this thing once in your whole life, you gotta be willing to eat the tag. Brian is truly one of a kind. I swear, he's part sheep. What a lucky guy. Not only did he fill out his tag, he shot one with a bow. 